Sorry. The sight of a roadblock fills most of us with dread, even if we have nothing to hide. Alcohol testing just puts people on edge. But it's not only at roadblocks where you'll find breathalyzers. In industries like mining, construction and public transport, in fact, wherever heavy machinery is operated, safety dictates that the day starts with a negative test for employees. A young man we call Simpiwe worked at a sawmill in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands. It was November 2020, just another workday like every other. But Simpiwe knew the drill. A sawmill is no place for drunk employees, and after 10 years on the job, he was used to the daily test. That morning, Simpiwe tested positive for being under the influence at work. It made no sense to him. He insisted that he only had three fat cakes and an energy drink for breakfast. Can we see? Zero. It's zero. Zero, zero, zero. In 2019, two traffic officers caused a social media storm when they ate hot cross buns and tested positive for alcohol on a breathalyzer. Breathalyzers come to play in criminal cases like driving under the influence and in the workplace. The legal limit on the road is 0.05 grams in 100 milliliters of blood. That's about one beer. In the workplace, the employer decides on the permissible limit. It's usually zero. Serious discrepancies have been raised about breathalyzers in the workplace, calling into question their scientific accuracy. Dr. Tim Lawrence has been working as a forensic toxicologist for more than 30 years. He's an expert in alcohol and drug testing, and he's found breathalyzers used at a roadblock or in the workplace notoriously unreliable. Are breathalyzers, can we trust them? That would be the biggest mistake that you can make, in my opinion. Remember, the zero level differs from device to another device. It depends on the quality of it. So we're not even sure what zero is rating. Dr. Lawrence says the devices can be fooled by a number of different foods, beverages, medicine, and household products. Breathalyzers are subject to interferences. And these interferences can be residual alcohol in the mouth, or it can be alcohol in the environment, or it can perhaps be alcohol on the person who holds the breathalyzer on his hands, maybe due to sanitizer. Our crew decided to do our own experiments to see how easy it was to trick a breathalyzer. We made sure no one had anything in their bodies that would compromise the tests. With everyone in the clear, we were set to experiment with hot cross buns, an energy booster, mouthwash and cough medicine. It might... Okay, so that, you are in an alcohol coma. <laughs> According to a guideline by Arrive Alive, a reading that exceeds 0.4 means the individual suffers from alcohol poisoning. It can be fatal. The traces of alcohol in my breath will disappear after a few more minutes. But at this moment, I'm in big trouble. Our producer took a cough mixture before blowing into the breathalyzer. <laughs> Although she's not breaking the law, the little alcohol in the medicine could get her fired from work. Most employers have a zero-tolerance alcohol policy. You must keep in mind that employers have an obligation, according to the Oc Health and Safety Act, uh, that people must be operating safely in the work environment. Our camera assistant took an energy booster sachet. If he was working in the transport sector, he'd be jobless after exceeding the legal limit of 0.02 grams per 100 mils of blood for professional drivers. As we were nearing lunch, our cameraman was only too happy to test the hot cross buns. Had he worked on a mine, it could have led to disciplinary action. Yeast is the main culprit. It ferments in the baking process, creating residual alcohol in the buns. Even following the keto diet can get you into trouble. 
Dr. Lawrence says the diet causes ketone bodies to be produced by the liver that form compounds similar to alcohol. And one of them is acetone. So if you would have acetone, it is metabolized or changed by the body to isopropanol. It's very similar to alcohol. So stay away from yeast and alcohol, right? But what if there's no way of knowing if there's alcohol in a drink? We waited for the cameraman's mouth alcohol to disappear and then gave him an alcohol-free energy drink. The result was worth a mic drop. Huh? There's no way for us to know what triggered that false positive, but all of these preliminary positive tests could have been ruled out by a second test. So a preliminary test is normally just what it says, a preliminary test, and it needs to be confirmed. The same procedure would apply for drug testing, for instance, if you, you collect the urine and you have a preliminary assay. And how is it then confirmed? The confirmation test involves a procedure as well as a technological device. Simpiwe's employer didn't send him for a confirmation test and he was fired. Mr. Peterman, I don't know what's going on here. I am not addicted to anything. Now, you might remember that episode of Seinfeld where Elaine is called into her boss's office because she failed a drug test for opium. She soon discovers it's because of the poppy seed muffins that she often enjoys. As funny as that episode of Seinfeld is, there's nothing funny about failing a breath or drug test because of the food you ate. Some US employees even resorted to what's now become known as the Seinfeld defense to fight unfair dismissal following positive drug tests. Our producer ate four muffins over the course of 12 hours. At 5 p.m., she tested positive for opioids. That includes prescription drugs such as codeine and morphine and illegal drugs like heroin. So now, if you're not careful, we can make all sorts of accusations against this worker now. Without the legal muscle to challenge these dismissals, disenfranchised workers lose their jobs and stand little to no chance of re-employment after being fired for being under the influence in the workplace. Legal experts have long understood the shortfalls in legislation when it comes to using breathalyzers, especially in the workplace. Khomutso Mufamadi is an attorney and lecturer at the University of Johannesburg. So just testing positive for alcohol on a breathalyzer is not sufficient to in dismiss and, someone? In and of itself, it won't be sufficient. Ideally, it would take quite a lot of other factors. For example, is this the first time the employee has come to work under the influence of alcohol? Are there other misconducts that the employee has committed? Dr. Llewellyn Kalouis, a criminal lawyer and senior lecturer, says there's no legislation forcing employers to send employees for confirmation tests. He sits with the situation that the employer must merely prove 51% to get a conviction and to dismiss that employee. The low burden of proof for employers makes new legislation critical to improve the fate of innocent workers. Legal experts, um, obviously uh, our parliamentarians and scientists must sit together, formulate proper protocol that must be incorporated in legislation. All we say is have protocols in place to secure that there's always a confirmatory test done We've been told some people get arrested at roadblocks after only a preliminary test. But Superintendent Michael Budolo from the Johannesburg Metro Police Department, or JMPD, says this is wrong and insists that proper procedure must be followed. You will gargle a little bit with the mouthwash, right? Operator will hold a breathalyzer and then he will request the subject to open a mouthpiece and explain the procedure thereof that if it's over the limit of the 0.24, like I've explained, the next phase, it will be the EBIT machine. The EBIT or evidentiary machine rules out any trace of alcohol that might have fooled the preliminary device. The mouthwash causes a positive reading on the preliminary breathalyzer. But after 15 minutes, the officer is tested on the more sophisticated device. You see how... Uh, ah, look at that. Uh, did, what did, it, did, did I tell you? Mouth alcohol. <laughs> so now we know that it's not ethanol. It's the alcohol that is in the mouth. But this information would be cold comfort to the young father from KwaZulu Natal who lost his job so unceremoniously.
Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.